What's up everyone, this is Bill with BLR Tuning. You guys know what time it is. I got a little video for you guys today. Um, this is for my friends over at Dino Jet. Uh, this is a wideband 2 with auto-tune. So this is gonna be their wideband 02 sensor setup. Um, this is the single channel. Uh, this will work. So here you can see the uh, part number and whatnot. Okay, we're gonna be installing this on the Kawasaki uh, Z400. Um, this will work on this will work on pretty much any bike as long as it has Power Commander 5 installed because this works with Power Commander 5. So it plugs into it uh, via the CAN bus cable that it comes with. Okay, so what this offers you is, a, is multiple things, okay? Uh, this gives you a wideband O2 sensor. So it lets you get rid of your factory narrowband sensor and then run a more intelligent setup. You know, this will let us tune so we can have a really clean air to fuel ratio mixture. You know, clean power is good power. So we're gonna be running a wideband. This is a Bosch six wire wideband O2 sensor that it comes with. Okay, and this is a very universal device. Okay, it does come with the wire here and then six wires that are color coded that plug into the back using a false small Phillips head screw. Then on the side here, you'll see a CAN bus cable. In, you have two uh, ports right here. We're gonna be utilizing one of those ports to plug it into our power commander and control it through power commander um, to be able to read things like air to fuel ratio, that type of stuff. Um, it is programmable. So it offers, a, you can use this in multiple setups. So uh, the way you would typically use it, it has this little green wire coming off of it. And again, this is a used one. This is one that we have sitting around the shop that we use on multiple bikes, you know, just to get the tune dialed in and check things out. Um, and te you know, testing and whatnot. So this green wire would go to your factory O2 sensor signal wire. So that wire comes back like from the ECU to this instead of from the ECU to your factory O2 sensor. Now this is intercepting that signal. Now we can program this to a desired Lambda value in the Dynojet C3 software, which is free to download. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and then we can program this to a desired Lambda value, which can be translated to AFR. So say if you need it to run at 13.5, it will take the entire closed loop section and set it to 13.5, okay? So that's one of the benefits of having this is that it's programmable now in the closed loop area and you're essentially deleting your factory O2 sensor, replacing it with a six wire. Um, it does have an AFR gauge plug-in right here. So this is for plugging in a AFR gauge. It does have some other little signal wires that you can plug in. I'm not gonna get too much into details, but there is lots of things that you can use this guy for. Okay, the other benefit is that it offers auto-tune in Power Commander 5. So let's say, um, take, the Z, take the Z400 for example. It has a very wide closed loop area. We can control the closed loop area by tapping into the signal wire and removing it from that factory O2 sensor and then plugging it into here. Now we can control the closed loop and then it will also auto-tune for us on the open loop where our tune is done in Power Commander 5, okay? Another great feature about this is that auto-tune feature like I was talking about. So on our bike, we're running um, Kawasaki Brad's O2 sensor delete plug, which means we can do all of our tuning in Power Commander 5 from zero to 100% throttle all throughout the RPM ranges. So we're not gonna be using the green wire because we don't have a factory O2 sensor anymore. Instead, we're gonna be using this six wire O2 sensor to read our air to fuel coming out and then we can set our target AFR in the tune from zero to 100% throttle. And then this will, set, this will give us suggested trim values as we ride the bike. So as long as we have a target AFR set, the bike, it may say, hey, I need 12 milliseconds of fuel right here to get to you know 14.7 if that's what you have it set at, right? And so then you would hit accept all trims on the auto tune tables and it will add those to the fuel on the fuel tables. And now you're gonna hit send map and send it back to the bike through Power Commander 5 software. So very robust uh, little device to have. It does come with all the types of hookups that you need. Little pins for tapping for power wire. It does need uh, power and ground. So we want our ground to the battery or to the chassis. And then we want our power lead to go to a ignition turn on off. So most, most of the time you would use something like a uh, tail light signal. Um, on some vehicles, you would need a uh, relay, 
you know, but on the Z400, we don't need a relay. So we're gonna go without one and we're gonna tap this into, we're gonna take a look at the, uh, we'll test first, but I think we're gonna take a look at the uh, rear brake light wire. I believe that is solid power once it is ignition on. So if that's the case, then that will work for power for us. And it's, you know, it's already fused in the bike. So no big deal there. Okay, and then we're not gonna be installing an AFR gauge, but you can. Um, Dinojet does offer one of those as well. Okay, so I'll put a link in the description below um, for this. It does come with the USB cable to plug into the computer. It comes with the CAN bus cable. It comes with everything you need to do the install. You just need the tools to do it. So we're gonna be removing the uh, seats and removing the right-hand side panel so we can get in there where our O2 sensor wire used to run. And we're just gonna follow that same route for our new O2 sensor wire. Okay, and then we'll just have this wired in. Uh, you will need this bigger, I believe it's an 18 millimeter bung, and it does come with one. I had one sitting out here. Yep, it does come with one, okay? So it does come with one that will get welded into your exhaust pipe if you don't have a bung already there. Some aftermarket pipes have one. We're running a full acropovic uh, setup that does have this size bung already in it. And we've already removed the factory plug so we can just utilize that hole and put this little plug right in there, no worries. Okay, so uh, I'll go over the basics of the install and show you guys how it installs. And then I will probably bring it up on the computer and show you guys how to accept the trims from Auto-Tune, that type of stuff. It's very simple, very basic. Um, as far as how it operates, it's easy to understand. DinoJet has made it as easy as possible. Uh, what it does in the background is some very complex math and very complicated things. It does it for you. You just got to accept the trim values and set target AFR in all of your AFR charts um, on your fuel tables. Okay, so we will go over this install and get it all installed and I'll quit talking. Okay, so first things first, remove your rear seat with that key underneath on the left side. Pull this little cable that's over here. Remove your driver's seat. And then there is going to be three four millimeter Allens up top here down here and up here and then the little push rivets push the center in they pop out there's three of them up in the front end of the bike and you're going to need to remove this right side panel and this is just so we can get down here you can see right now we have it plugged off uh, we need to get this out of here and utilize uh, that bung right there and then we're going to run our wire where the factory wire went and up to our wide band which is going to be mounted um, I'm pretty sure we're going to mount it somewhere back here so we can get to it easily uh, we'll figure out a good mounting location. I'll show you guys how I run it. But that is what we need to do to get started, okay? There'll be a link in the description below for my video on this. And there is also a link to purchase. Um, this is from Kawasaki Brad. And this is his O2 sensor delete kit. So if you want to run the full spectrum of tuning in Power Commander 5, you can just do this delete kit. And then your tune can be from 0 to 100% uh, RPM and throttle position in Power Commander 5, okay? If not, then you're gonna have to tune only the open loop section and use the green wire for the O2 sensor signal input wire. Okay, so let's get this installed. Okay, so per our install for our WB2, we are going to be running our power wire. This is gonna be, if you cut the little plastic sleeve from your tail light section, it's gonna be this red wire, okay? That red wire is going to be power wire when the key is on. It shows a 12 volt. When you start the bike, still shows 12 volt. You hit the blinkers or anything else and it doesn't interfere with it, okay? So you see we've already made a small pinhole. We're gonna use one of these little connectors that tap onto there and, and go through that little pinhole. And then this is gonna be our power wire going down to our WB2 and I'll show you where we mounted that. Okay, so here's our wideband O2 sensor. You see we have that threaded in tight. We have it running up along here. Our plug is gonna sit here. Um, we've utilized this little slot right here for a zip tie and zip tied it right to the clamp on this hose. So it just kind of sits there. Then the cable runs up through here and up through this main harness little setup here. It comes up here and we've zip tied everything out of the way and zip tied it to this factory O2 sensor plug so it can't get moved around. This plug's gotta be ran back there to the tail section. That's what plugs into Power Commander 5. That is our data, our little um, CAN bus cable. 
Okay, and then our WB2 is right here under the gas tank in this little empty tray. Um, so we've used the two-sided Velcro and Velcroed it down. Everything is plugged in. We can get to that easily if we need to pull it out of there. I've left myself enough slack to be able to pull it, lift it up off the Velcro and come out without removing the gas tank. Okay, so we got to zip tie some wires up out of the way. We have our ground wire here going straight to battery. And then we have our power wire going up here under the tail section to that little spot that I showed you. Um, we did use a volt tester and test that. So it's that red wire coming off of the uh, tail light. Okay, so we'll get her all wired up and then we'll get her plugged into the computer. Okay, so now that we got our wideband all installed, our little WB2 is installed up under the gas tank here, like I showed you, we got all the panels back on. Um, everything came out really clean. That's just our coiled up USB wire that I keep with me in case I need it. But uh, so now we have our, we went out and we rode the bike uh, we put about 10 miles on it. Uh, we took it down freeway, back roads, city roads. Okay, so now the auto-tune tables have a solid set of numbers and are, you know, going to request fuel or request to take away fuel. That's what the trims are going to look like. So now we're going to take a look at the software. So we do have the key on and the kill switch in the run position. And uh, we should see... When we open Power Commander 5 software, we plug in the computer, we're going to hit get map. That's going to get the map from the bike. Okay, and this is my trims right here. So this is the auto-tune trims. Okay, so you can see it is suggesting some trims. Not too bad. We don't see anything crazy, right? We have minus 5 right there. It looks like plus 5 right here. So that's like the highest ones. Okay, so to accept these trims and add them to our fuel chart. So basically what it's saying is... I have a target AFR set right here if I click on this target AFR. Okay, what it's saying is it needs two milliseconds of fuel to get to that target AFR. Okay, that's what all these are saying. So wherever you set a target AFR, it's going to try to suggest trim values to get you there. Okay, so now we're going to go map tools. We're going to go auto-tune tables. We're going to go accept all trims. We're going to hit yes. Okay, now you see it went back to zero. Okay, so now all those trims have been added to our fuel tables. Now we can go down here to send map. And you should see down here, two devices connected. That's our wideband and our Power Commander 5. Map sent successfully. Okay, and then I have a list of notes here that I can put in. Okay, so to enable the auto-tune, when you first install it. So last thing we're going to do is we hit send map, right? Map sent successfully, 100%. Okay, so now this map's back on the bike. Okay, so now we can go... To enable auto-tune, this is where you're going to start from, okay? We're going to go to Power Commander Tools. We're going to configure. We're going to go to Feature Enables. Okay, and right here you're going to see a checkbox. Auto-tune, not the auto-tune switch. That's an on and off switch. Auto-tune. Check that box. If you hit configure, it'll ask you, like this one's set up for, this is default, okay? So minimum runtime is 60 seconds. That means the bike needs to be running for one minute before auto-tune can even come on. Okay, so once the bike's running for one minute, auto-tune can kick on. We can also go by engine temperature. So if you're building something like a big bore kit, something like that, and you really need to monitor um, when auto-tune actually starts suggesting trims, like when it's cold, you wouldn't necessarily want it to start suggesting trim values. So you can set a temperature in here. I usually go after something like maybe 85 degrees, 90 degrees. Um, that's, you know, that's a pretty decent running temperature for a bike so once it gets to that temperature it would be okay to start accepting trims okay so it won't even suggest any trims it's not even activated until it reaches that temperature or this time okay and then max enrichment uh max and limit so that is how much milliseconds of fuel is it is it able to suggest we have it set at 20 that's going to be default okay so default is 20 which means if you see a number at 20 in your trims, that means it was maxed out right there. Okay, so that means you need to accept the trims, go ride the bike again, see if that happens again. Then you need to start looking at it. Why is it needing more fuel there or less fuel there? Um, maybe add some fuel in your tune. Okay, you can change these, but I usually leave them default. Eventually, when the bike starts getting down to where it's only showing you know, one or two, uh, milliseconds of fuel requested 
you know, plus or minus, uh, then I would stop using the auto tune. You know, then it, at that point you could actually uninstall the auto tune. You know, once you have this map built entirely in Power Commander 5. Okay. So that is it. We now have the bike working and operating. Okay, so we can start it up and see how she idles. Okay, so now we got the bike idling. As you can see, here's our AFR that tells us that our wideband is working. Okay, we do have two devices connected down here in the corner. You can see that it is showing AFR. So right now she's idling right around 14.5. So that's really good. Okay, and then as soon as we get on the throttle, we can see our AFR change upon how we want it. So it's idling right in between uh, 14.5, 14.7, 4, right in there. So that's pretty much ideal right there for um, pump gas, okay, which is what we run on this bike. So this bike just runs like 91 to 96 premium octane. Um, Stoich value for it is 14.7 to so that's 14.7 AFR, which is a Lambda 1. So that is it for the auto-tune and wideband install. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you got any questions about tuning, get a hold of me, BLR Tuning on Facebook. You can get a hold of us by messaging us through the Facebook page. Um, I'm on all social media. I'll leave all links in the description below. Also leave a link to go grab yourself uh, this WB2 device from DinoJet. Um, yeah, if you guys want to get some tuning work done, hit me up. We can do all this stuff via email as far as the tuning goes. And if you're local, I'm in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, we do install Power Commander, wideband. We do the tune. We offer like a package deal, all that stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.